any of the weaknesses. Uh, maybe we're missing a tactic here, though. Yeah. So at least we can get the pawn back. But I um, let me see. So even so, even so, I kind of prefer Block's position, unless I'm missing something, which I don't think I am, but I might be. I mean, still, Block doesn't have any weaknesses. So even if I play here, maybe positionally I'm getting a little squished. I don't think so. Now I want to take this, take on c2 at some point. Oh no, no, so there is no knight d6 because now I can take the rook. Okay, so this little tactic was missed. So knight d4, so takes, takes. Uh, I'm not sure why black didn't want to take this. Because once you win this pawn too, now you definitely don't care about this d7 pawn. Because you're up a pawn and you don't mind if you lose one back. I mean, you're up two pawns. So if you don't want mind to lose one back, in a way that benefits you. So here... So it's not even clear how white is going to attack this pawn. Now I can come after this pawn. So again, if we lose this pawn, it's not such a big deal. Because we still have an extra pawn and we have these weaknesses to attack. So I'm not sure why maybe black missed it, and this is another reason why it really didn't want my pawn on h4, because pawn on h4 is just random, and here it's just hanging. So here, rook takes. Uh, so let me see. Again, I don't see an attack for white, so... Yeah, I would prefer to come after this guy. And take it with a tempo, and we're gonna have a rook on the 7 rank, so maybe play for some activity. But, okay, rook g3. I mean, structurally, I still... Now, because of this pawn... You know, black is always going to be some going to have some problems. So it's never just your up a healthy pawn. You're up a very weak pawn. So we want to be able to give this pawn back in a way that we can come after these guys. And and I don't want to lose my d7 pawn in a way that all of a sudden white rooks end up on the seven rank together, and then <clears throat> my position is just bad as black. But rook g3, okay, so rook g3 has a threat of queen g4, so this is something to deal with. So black played f5. Okay, f5 is a move that I suggested before, so can't be that bad. So take, so now, can we take with the queen? Uh, let's see. It's actually, it's kind of sad because here, you're attacking my f2 pawn, but it doesn't matter. Mm, this hangs. Okay, so rook f6. Queen g4, queen f8. The queen f8 is a very simple blunder. So we have to play what? Rook here. And this is also something I mentioned before, right? When I said that the rook can go on f7, it's going to defend this 7 And now, next move, I'm going to play queen f7. Now this guy is hanging. Or you can't even play queen e7. We don't have to do that. It just kind of seems to me that... Um, Black grabbed his pawn and then he started playing extremely defensively. Like, first of all, not taking on h4. Like, why would you... Why do you want to defend from f8 and knight e7? Like, if we're given the choice, I think... Queen e7 is so much more natural movement. Queen f8 just seems... Okay, you're attacking f2, but it just seems such a passive move. Yeah, I mean, if you're gonna take a pawn like b2, you know, you have to be brave. So here, here, takes, takes. So here I would want to play f5 again. 
So rook c8 cannot be a bad move, of course. So f5, I like this part. Yeah, queen f8 is a blunder, but uh, I think maybe this blunder happened because black has been playing so defensively, not because it's just a random blunder. So queen e7, queen e7, like, this is weak. Rook f8 is coming, no threats. White doesn't have an attack here. It's very hard to imagine that white is going to do something to black's position here. Like, black hasn't done anything bad. I mean, white could have played more actively or put more pressure before, but he didn't. So black didn't do anything bad. Structurally, he's not worse. He doesn't have any weaknesses, so why, why should white have an attack here? Black doesn't have any bad pieces. There's like nothing... There's not one bad thing that I can point out and say, oh, and this is why white should be able to build an attack, or this is why white should have an initiative. So there's no reason to panic and no reason to do anything. So the rook is attacking. The rook can come to f8. You know, the pawns can start moving soon. So just a nice position. So queen f8, rook e7. Mm. I did mention rook d7 instead of knight d4, so there was a blunder. Queen e6, rook c2, rook f3. Yeah, so overall I have to say the opening... <laughs> Bishop b5. I have to mention it again. Doesn't go in this position. 97 again stopping your opponent's one idea one idea or bishop b5 with the purpose of taking on c6 i mean it's not that good of an idea to start with so no need to put uh, so much resource so many resources and so much um, effort into stopping that one idea mm, so personally this queen b6 moves not a fan so all, all this was interesting and I would have to say that one of the moves, the ideas that I don't like for white is this h4 and <clears throat> queen g3 idea. So as I said, e5 and putting an, sorry, e5, putting a knight on e4 and really playing against this bishop. For example, even if the queens get traded, I can put a rook on p6, knight on d6 and it's going to be very hard to develop this bishop. Of course, it's hard to play when one of your pieces is still stuck on c8. So here, you're just, white is playing for initiative. And the initiative is this d6 square, the dark squares in general, and this c8 pawn. Doesn't always have to be on the king side. I know it's more fun to play that way, and I like it too, but sometimes it just have to do what the position requires and not what you want to do. So yeah, so white really didn't get anything in this game. And of course, black should have just taken an h4 and had a great position and won the game, but black blundered at the end. And again, this f5 move that I've mentioned before, common in this kind of structures, and here it's just nothing to be scared of in this position. Like when your opponent's attacking you, you really have to be a little realistic and, you know, try to see if it's a, is it a real attack or is it just, you know, kind of your imagination or you're being scared. So because black has no bad pieces and hasn't done anything wrong, there's no reason for white to be able to build this great attack. Alright, so that's that for this position, for this game. Okay, so our next game. So next game is a very strange game. It's one of the strangest games I've ever seen and it's kind of fun to look at those kind of games. Because they're unusual and you usually don't know what's going on. Um, I wanted to look at it from Black's point of view. So yeah, flip the board. Okay. C4, E5. So, so far normal English. I feel like a lot of people don't really have a good setup against the English. It's very easy if you play the King's Indian, because against the English you can also do a King's Indian setup. It's just one of the main things I like about playing the King's Indian, because I could do the same things against so many openings. I didn't like the fact that I had to play the King's Indian though. And e4. I don't know about this e4 move right here. Because now you get um, like this position. And I can't say that I prefer the pawn on c4. Because what are the advantages for white? 